So good morning. Good morning. I am not our community spiritual leader, the Reverend C.C. Coltrane. What I like to say is that I am taller. <laughs> uh, no, I, I could say that. <laughs> Kenny is standing. I am standing. <laughs> So good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Dayton. I am Stephanie Stewart, and I am one of our practitioners, and I will um, be presenting the encouragement this morning. So if you're here for the first time, um, thank you for sharing your morning with us. Uh, on your bulletin cover is a tear-off uh, form that you can uh, fill out and stay in touch with us, or so we can stay in touch with you. Just take it to the Welcome Center uh, after service. Um, we can send you, Reverend Cece sends out a spiritual uplift, a spiritual blast every Wednesday uh, via email. Um, you can also uh, put it in the offering basket when it goes around toward the end of service. And if uh, you do that, we will donate a dollar on your behalf to a charity of your choice. So on pulpit today is Linda Andriaco. Our vigil holder is Marge Russell. And Lenza Smith and Linda Andriaco will be doing our interfaith candle lighting. We do this interfaith candle lighting because here at Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Dayton, we respect, honor, and draw from the wisdom of all the world's religious traditions, the same way our founder Ernest Holmes did. So as we look at education and continuous improvement this month, one place we envision our continuous improvement is in our youth program, and I'm very excited to actually be a part of that. Um, we have revamped it. We have wonderful people creating curriculum and teaching and all sorts of stuff. And if you're interested in being involved with that, please either see Angie, if you would raise your hand, Becky, myself, or Carol. Carol. Carol is back over here. <clears throat> we need folks to volunteer that would like to teach, that would like to help create the curriculum. And coming this spring and summer, we need gardeners. If you are interested in working with the kids in a gardening program that we've created, um, we are definitely looking for some volunteers. So if I could have um, Miss Carol come up. Carol's working with our 6 to 11 year olds today. Excuse me. And Miss Jen, I see you. She's working with our teens and tweens today. And so on page 61 uh -huh. of the book. 61. Page 61 of your songbook is a song that we sing to our kids called You Are. And whomever we've got, if you'd like to come up and stand with your teachers, Let's let's give them a song. All right. We shall sing to you. <laughs> Christianity. Jesus said, For I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or sick or in prison and did not help you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. We light the next candle in honor of Buddhism. Only do 
the development of compassion and understanding for others can bring us the tranquility and happiness we all seek. We light the next candle in honor of Hinduism. The moment I have realized God sitting in the temple of every human body, the moment I stand in reverence before every human being and see God in him, that moment I am free from bondage. Everything that binds vanishes and I am free. We light the next candle in honor of Judaism. Judaism is the only religion I know all of whose canonical text and anthropological of arguments, arguments between God and humans, human and God, humans and one another, differences, arguments, clashes of style and substances are signs not of unhealthy division, but of health. We light the next candle in honor of Taoism. The Tao fragmented and created the earth, plants, animals, and other life forms. This fragmentation provided a lot more opportunities for the Tao to learn, grow, and development. The Tao desires diversity, a planet of diversity, races, cultures, economic strata, education, beliefs, values, values sexual orientation, rules, etc. have merit for the Tao. We light the next candle in honor of Islam. O oh, mankind, we created you from male and female and made you into nations and tribes that ye may know each other, not that you may despise each other. Verily, the most honored of you in the sight of Allah is he who is the most righteous of you. And Allah has full knowledge and is fully informed. We light the final candle in honor of the Native American religions. Since the beginning, Native people lived a life of being in harmony with, the surround, with all that surrounds us. It is a belief that all humankind are related to each other. Each has a purpose, spirit, and sacredness. And as a further test, <laughs> Stephanie picked <laughs> the most obscure person writing that you could find, and his <coughs> name is Jadu Krishnamurti. Um, his, his quote is, truth cannot be brought down, rather the individual must make the efforts to ascend to it. You cannot bring the mountaintop to the valley, if you would attain to the mountaintop, you must pass through the valley, climb the steeps, unafraid of the dangerous precepts. If you will take these words into the silence for a moment. God is here right now in every single person here, every single person in this whole wide universe, in the sunshine that is shining this morning, sparkling and making everything just smile with the glory of God. And we are part of this glory. We are part of the sunshine and we are the sunshine that goes out into the world to make things whole and complete and everything is in divine right order. I am thankful for this time. I am thankful for everyone who is here, for everyone that is participating, for the beautiful music and everything in between. And I say thank you, God, and so it is. Do you want me to introduce you too? No.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, fine. You can tell that we're practical. Walk the journey together. <laughs> I'm not organized, I'm sorry. Good morning. morning. How are you? Great. Good, good, good. Um, I was telling a few people this morning that I actually wrote my talk last night, which is pretty scary. Although, um, Reverend Cece told me that one time she wrote one at 5 o'clock Sunday morning. (laughs) You're going to talk about flying by the seat of your pants. I can't even imagine, but... uh, um, But as as a lot of you probably know, I'm uh, in ministerial school. I'm actually approaching the end of the first year. (laughs) And a a few weeks ago, um, my wife Kim and I, we went out to dinner with some friends that we don't get to see quite as often since we moved down here to the Dayton area. And um, over the course of dinner, one of them asked me, they said, uh, so are you still enjoying your classes? (laughs) I guess it's been showing. (laughs) But I I just sort of snorted and I said, I haven't enjoyed any of them. And to their credit, they both looked uh, suitably horrified for me. And then one of them asked, so what are you going to do? And I know my answer made everyone at the table at least a little uncomfortable. And it took me a while. It took me a while to reply because I thought, well, what am I going to do? And what I said was, what else can I do? It wasn't a flip answer. It wasn't an answer of defeat or resignation. I know it didn't sound like that to my friends, and it might not even sound like that to you, but it was, it was an answer. It was a moment of real joy. Because, you see, in that moment, I understood that I had finally come through to the other side of a valley that I'd been walking in for months. What else can I do? When the whole world opens up to you, because you're finally saying yes to your highest potential, to your path that leads you to your highest expression, that's terrifying. And that's what happened to me when I said yes to ministerial school. Time, money, housing, it was like it appeared on a magic carpet. And I did my best to close my heart down to every last bit of it. I did everything begrudgingly. And I grumbled about it the entire way. (laughs) And it was miserable. And I was miserable. And I was miserable to be around. Give Kim a hug the next time you see her because she has endured. (laughs) Give Reverend Cece and Clara one, too. And for a while, I really didn't understand what I was doing. I just thought I was stressed out. You know, new job, new home, new education, all in the span of maybe three months. I thought I was just an exhausted grumpy crab already but I didn't want to feel like that I kept asking Reverend Cece is this what it's going to be like I don't want to feel like this I don't want my entire three years to be like this was it like this for you please tell me that this isn't it and to her endless endless credit every time I said something like this to her she would look at me shrug and say, I hope not. (laughs) I kept thinking this should be an absolutely joyous time in my life, and it was so painful. And I didn't understand why. But I was determined. After every class, I would say, forget it. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not coming back. 
And the next day I would say, I'll do one more, but that's it. <laughs> and yes, I knew I was lying. <laughs> I was determined not to get through the next class or to become a minister or to fulfill my potential or to not disappoint people. I was determined to heal my pain. What else can I do? I was begging the universe to send me someone, anyone or anything that could teach me what was happening to me. I threw myself open asking, not that I'd be handed an answer because that would not have been my answer, but that someone or something cast a light so I could see it myself. And as it turns out, that someone was Reverend Molly Cameron of Columbus Center for Spiritual Living. And that something was another class <laughs> called Contemporary Applications of the Science of Mind. I don't know how there wasn't bloodshed in that class. <laughs> we watched the news, all of the news channels. We read as many different news sources as we could come across. And then we looked at all of these different topics through the lens of the science of mind, through the lens of what we talk about each and every day here. And I hated it. <laughs> I hated everybody in it. I hated myself. I walked out of class the first night. I walked out. I said, I can't do this. I won't do this. You can't make me. I'm out of here. Yes, I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> I was so scared. And I think what it was is that intuitively I knew I was about to see a way to heal my pain. You see, this class, it, it ripped my heart open, my heart that I'd been trying so hard to keep closed, keep me safe. And because of the sheer workload of the class, all of the books that had to be read, five books before the class even started, all of the books that had to be read, all the papers that had to be written, I didn't have a chance to close it back up. We each sort of live in our own little box, and that box is filled with all the things that we know, all of our own things. This is what I know, this is what I have, this is how I feel. This makes me a little uncomfortable, but I can lean into it now and then. When I said yes to ministerial school, I was suddenly dropped into a much bigger box with lots of open space. It was a glimpse of how magnificent life, my life, could be. And I was scared. I was afraid. I am afraid. <laughs> but I'm more afraid of the pain of that misery, and I know my fear will not protect me from that. I know closing my heart will not protect me from the uncertainty that is stepping into this larger life. What else can I do? Part of the 23rd Psalm says, yea, though I walk through the valley, we walk. We don't build a cabin because the view is nice. We walk, and sometimes we feel powerless. We're always at a moment of power, though. We always have choices in front of us. I think we feel powerless when we don't like any of our choices. Do I do the treatment the doctor wants me to, or do I take my chances? Do I face financial uncertainty, or do I stay in a job that is killing my soul? Do I stay wrapped in loneliness, or do I risk rejection, or even worse, heartbreak? Do I stay miserable in my familiar smallness, or do I do the most frightening thing I can think of and step into the bigger unknown? We can't stand at the crossroads of choices we don't like forever. We have to keep going. We have to keep walking. We have to keep choosing. What else can we do? Being reachable and teachable isn't just about willingness. It isn't only, yes, I want to learn from you. Yes, teach me what you know. Yes, I'm listening. It's about acceptance. 
yes, these are my choices, and my choices stink, and there's something here for me, and it hurts, and it's better than the alternative, and the answer is in here with me somewhere. When my friends asked me what I was going to do when I admitted I wasn't enjoying any of my classes, and I said, what else can I do? My choices were to keep going to ministerial <coughs> school or to walk away. I know continuing to go will be painful and frightening and transforming. And it will fill that great big empty box that I'm in right now. And then I'll have to get an even bigger one. But I know to walk away will be to choose a life that is less than what I want. That is less than what I deserve. And that does not heal my pain. If anything, it causes a greater wound. We cannot grow as individuals and we cannot progress as the human race if we believe that our fear will always be our best protector. To be reachable and teachable is to say, I'm scared, but I will take another step today. It is to be determined to heal our own pain. And as we heal ourselves, we become role models for others to heal themselves, and our world changes for the better. Now, there are easier ways to walk through your own valley. All of the spiritual practices come to mind. Meditate, journal, pray, talk with a practitioner. I would love to tell you that I did all of those things and more. The simple truth is, I abandoned all of them. <laughs> and I engaged in the great American pastime. I complained. I can't believe Reverend sees he didn't throw me out of the program. I can't believe Claire didn't throw things at me. <laughs> I have no grace in personal adversity, none. I am messy, and I don't see that changing a whole lot. <laughs> but I'm also willing and accepting. So whether it's a class, or a workshop, or a practitioner session, or a spiritual practice, or another infernal class, <laughs> if I have one strength at all, it is that I am reachable and teachable. It may take a sledgehammer to get to me sometimes. But I know that I am determined to keep walking forward through whatever valley I find myself in. And why? Because there is peace on the other side of that valley. There is the power that comes from liking some of my choices on the other side of that valley. There is more of the life I deserve on the other side of that valley. There is more evidence of our oneness on that side of the valley. Despite what I said, I didn't tell you my story today to be a role model. I didn't tell you my story today so that you would think that I'm brave or ministerial. I told you my story today because I And we've all felt desperate. But I also knew that I could heal my pain. And that I could do it if I kept walking through the valley I was in. I could do it if I kept looking for those lamplights to highlight my own knowledge and wisdom. I could do it if I said, I need some help here. I could do it if I kept saying yes. When we pray, we say that the universe, the universe or source or God says yes to us. And we also say that we are each an expression of that, that universe, that source, God, whatever you want to call it. So if it only says yes, and we are that, I am begging you to say yes. I am begging you to say yes to the wisdom that is already inside each of you even though sometimes we all need someone or something to shine a light on it. I am begging you to be determined to heal your pain because we are each less without you. 
What else can I do? So join me now in prayer. Join me now in one of the practices that shine the light on our own inner wisdom. Join me in one of those teachable things that make our answers reachable. So here and now I know there is no place God is not. That the God of my belief is a living, breathing power that is everywhere present. Present in all things. Flowing through all people. The one simply is. It is truth and strength and light. It is all wisdom. All answers. It is peace. It is power. It is the very heart of oneness. And I am a part of that. And it is all of me. I may find myself in the murk and the mud of indecision. I may find myself in the pain of growth. But this peace, this power, this strength, this truth, this light is still a part of me. I have only to turn within to it. And so now I speak my word for everyone that can hear my voice. Because we are all a part of the greater one. I know that what is true for me, what I have just pronounced for myself is true for all of us. We are never forsaken. We are never separate from God. The peace, the power, the strength, the truth, the light of all that is, is within each of us here and now. Wisdom is ours. Clarity is ours. The very heart of oneness is ours. And I am grateful. I am grateful to learn and grow. I am grateful to keep walking despite fear. I am grateful for the lamplighters that remind me of my wisdom. And I am grateful for everyone present here today, knowing we grow as individuals and as a community in this place of great safety and love. So I let this go. I release this prayer into the heart of God that only says yes to us. It says yes to the magnificence of our lives. And we say together, and so it is.
So we have an opportunity to give to this center, this place that teaches us, that heals us, and that lets us go out into the world and be healers and lamplighters. So if you will please affirm with me, I am joyful. I am joyful. I am free. I am free. I am grateful. I am grateful. I give with gratitude. I give with gratitude. And I say yes. And I say yes. To all the good life has to offer. To all the good life has to offer. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. Kenny, I have a question. When do you decide on the music for any given Sunday? When do you set that? A couple weeks ahead. A couple weeks ahead of time. I remember I wrote my talk last night. So talk. tell me you don't believe in divine guidance here. Yeah. So a couple of quick announcements then. Um, it is cooking with God time. Do you want to talk about it? Denise wants to talk about it. <laughs> Come on, Denise. Turn this one on for you. Want this? Podium mic. Podium mic. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. It is cooking with talk God time again, um, and our dates are coming up soon. We would like all events submitted by next Sunday. So. Um, is there anyone out there who's thinking of submitting an event? Okay, I am too. I'm going to probably do two of them. Is there anyone who's hoping that they will sign up for some of the event events? Good, yes. So our goal is to, for our 2007, is to have 15 events and to raise $6,000. Um, because this is... A whole lot of fun, but we also want it to be a fundraiser for our center as well. So I just wanted to give everyone a reminder that there is um, some info in your bulletin, and I will be around after church today if anyone has any questions. Um, and I'm also, I think I have my contact information with phone number and email. So um, be willing to ask me any questions or contact me if you need to, but I'm hoping that we can reach our goal of 15 events, $6,000, and events submitted by next Sunday. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. And while Stephanie's walking up, I just wanted to take a moment to thank Jane for the beautiful decorations. She's always changing everything when we come in. Isn't that kind of nice to see it? So, Jane, thank you so much. How was springy? Is that a sign of things to come, isn't it? Um, yes, $6,000. Uh, we... Let's see, we had almost 5,000 pledged last year, so very, very reachable. Let's, uh, let's do that. The, uh, that fundraiser is big for us, and it uh, pays for a lot of things that we may not think about here on a Sunday, but uh, they're very vital. So, uh, yeah, $6,000 is very, very reachable, very reachable. And a lot of new friends. Yeah, and a lot of new friends. There are a lot of fun events. Kelly and I are trying to, trying to piece one together. I think we're, we're leaning toward a spa day, so. So if you want to learn more about the center... If you're new, if you've been just coming for a few weeks or maybe a few months and you'd like to learn more about the center uh, and what it means to be a member, on March 19th, right after service, Reverend Cece will be holding a Find Out More class. Please make sure you take a look at the calendar page on the bulletin for more information about some of our upcoming activities. Um, let's see, if you have a spare bedroom and you would be willing to host uh, a ministerial student, they come from Chicago, New Jersey, Maryland, North Carolina. Um, I have quite a few classmates that come from pretty good distance. So if you're willing to host someone, please let me know. Um, and I, I know that they appreciate that a great deal. Uh, back to, just for a second, the children's program, the gardening program. Um, we are getting ready to start seeds. So if you have the paper egg cartons, not the foam ones, please, but the paper egg cartons, if you will bring those in, whether you bring them on a Sunday or you bring them during the weekend to the office, I'm collecting them, and we're going to start seeds with those. Um, let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would like prayer after service, our licensed prayer practitioners, we, lo we do love to pray with you. We do love to pray with you. Look for any of these ladies that are wearing the white or teal shawls. Um, we go to school for a pretty long time to be able to see the truth for you. And it's our gift to you on Sunday it is a one-minute miracle. You can also put a written prayer request in the uh, box on the table in the back, and that will be picked up after service. So now, for the first three minutes after service ends, talk to somebody you don't know, right? Or you don't know well. Um, get your hugs in. 
find somebody, start a conversation, right? So thank you to everybody who made this morning's service possible. Ushers and greeters, the practitioners, the welcome team, of course the Higher Mind Band, our teachers, our kids, and absolutely all of you. So if you'll please stand with me for our closing affirmation, and after that our closing song, which is I Am Opening. Nope. No, Holy Ground. No. Holy Ground? Oh, I see. <laughs> it got changed in one place, but not in the other. I'm sorry. Are we ready? Yes. yes. Ice deep breath. I am willing. I am willing. I am accepting. I am accepting. I am strong. I am strong. I am reachable and teachable. I am reachable and teachable. So I am peaceful. So I am peaceful. And so it is. And so it is. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you.